Well, Coach, as we get closer to the first game of the season this Saturday against the Washington Huskies, just uh, let us know how uh, you're feeling about your team and how the team's been looking in practice the last few days. Well, you know, we, we finally started on uh, Washington, uh, so the team is trying to get used to our game plan, which makes it a little tough. But we got an extra day this week because we practiced yesterday, which we really don't usually. Camp, I, I thought camp was okay. I thought we got better as we went. I I think we're going to be a good football team sometime this season, hopefully the first week. But when you look at Washington on film, they're awful good on offense, and we don't know exactly what they're going to do on defense. Coach, we have been uh, so supportive, both Ben and I, just absolutely love the notion of uh, going for it on fourth down. And I know that you have been uh, been uh, bombarded with questions about uh, the possibility that you're going to be going for it on fourth down and plus territory this year. How close are you to making a decision on what you're going to do in that regard? Well, we've uh, we've had some help from people on campus. I have to ask them if he wants to, everybody to know who's helping us. It's a it's a guy that does that sort of thing for a living, and uh, we've been plugging into formulas that other people have used. We've been plugging our stats into those formulas and trying to decide if it's uh, beneficial for us to go for it on fourth down. We're meeting with them today. Uh, so I'm sure we'll have a decision here in the next day or two, but we're not going to tell anybody. <laughs> I like that, too. Whatever happened to the old saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks? I mean, no no offense, Coach, but I, I, I call you an old dog in, in the most respectful of ways. and <laughs> I'm just impressed. That I, there's a lot of coaches around who wouldn't even consider something like this, who wouldn't ask a, a member of the staff, you know, a, an intellectual, a math guy, uh, about how he should be running his football team. But you seem very willing to go and, and talk to other people. What is, what is it about that that maybe makes you different, maybe from some other coaches? Well, I, I don't know, and I and I consider myself an old dog too. So, and probably <laughs> not not in glowing terms either. But uh, I, I think we're going to be in a lot of close games, and I think that whenever you're going to when you anticipate being in a lot of close games, you're always looking for an edge. Uh, some people are getting an edge right now with going with the no huddle offense. That way they get more plays. Uh, they think that gives them an advantage. I'm not sure it does, but a lot of people believe that. Uh, we're looking for a way to give our offense more possessions, more plays, uh, uh, in order to have them have a chance to score more points. And that seemed like, uh, after I'd heard about the high school coach, it seemed like a pretty good idea. So we started investigate. We've talked to the high school coach. Uh, people have given us formulas that believe the same thing, statisticians, mathematicians, everybody. So we contacted a guy on campus, and he's gone through it with us, and uh, he's coming over for his presentation this afternoon and giving us the final formula to see if it works for us, and then we'll make a decision. We love the idea, so just let it be known that uh, this show is on record as saying we absolutely love the idea. Rocky Long is with us, Aztecs open up against Washington on Saturday night. Tell us a little bit about the new quarterback, Ryan Katz, Coach. Uh, we had Ryan Lindley in here for four years and uh, had a lot of success with one Ryan. How much success are we going to have with a different Ryan? Well, uh, Ryan came in, Ryan Katz came in, and uh, I think he's done a great job of uh, becoming part of the team. I think in the spring he was just getting used to our offense. I think early in the fall camp he was still getting used to our offense. But I've seen a big change here in probably the last 10 days. I think he has command of our offense. Uh, he has great leadership in the huddle. He has experience that we all know. He's been throwing the ball a lot more accurate here in the last two or three days, uh, completing passes that he wasn't completing earlier. So I, I think that he's going to have a great year. I, I think it's a good transition, and I think he's going to have a really good year. In college, do you have to approach the first game of the of the season drastically differently than, say, you know, the tenth or eleventh game, especially when you got a, a bunch of young players who haven't started before? Do you coach differently early in the season? Well, we're approaching this one a little bit different on offense because we don't really know what they're going to do on defense. I mean, we're basing it on they have a new coordinator, and we're basing it on where the places he's coached before. Uh, but there's some indication that he has changed his scheme. So we're going into it a little different there. On defense, we're going to it just like a regular game, just like we're late in the season or midseason, because we know what they're going to do on offense, and they're very good at it. Coach, how do you get your kids to believe that they got a good shot to win at Washington? I mean, uh, 
I understand you're a couple touchdown underdogs. It's going to be a very difficult game. I know that you brought some some crowd noise into your practices. Uh, it's going to be very loud up there in Seattle. You got a Pac-12 opponent. You guys have uh, you guys beat one last year, but haven't beaten one on the road in quite some time. Do you have to get your kids to believe that they can win this game? I don't think so. I think I think we're in the part of our program that we believe that we can win any game. And I think if we play well, I think we're going to win. If we don't play well, uh, obviously we don't have much of a chance of winning, and, and it could get bad because they're so explosive on offense. But I, I don't think our team has a lack of confidence. I, I think our team's confident in our ability, and I don't think we really care who we play. I think we just go out there and play and play hard, and if we play well, we've got a good chance. When we were at practice last week, we are talking to Coach Rocky Long of the Aztecs. You said depth charts are for the media. They're not. They're not for you guys. They, they're. They're just for us, and they don't mean. Anything. I can second that because trying to study his depth chart and get ready to call a game is almost impossible. So, having said that, though, going through camp and now into your first week of getting ready for game practices, who are some of the guys that maybe fans haven't heard of that have impressed you? I just opened up your eyes a little bit here at the start of the season. Well, I mean, we already talked about Ryan Katz. Everybody hasn't seen him play, and and I think they'll be impressed with him. I think if you want to go into the trenches, you look at Bryce Quigley, who's our left tackle, starting left tackle, and usually the offensive lineman. We start five. They play the whole game, and he moved from tight end. I think people will be impressed on the transition he's made. Uh, I think uh, Bryce Butler is a new wide receiver to the program. Ezell Ruffin has been in the program but hadn't played much. I think people will be impressed watching him. I, you know, there's several guys that uh, we have a lot of confidence in that we think are good players that they haven't seen yet, and most of them are in the receiving core. When you talk about your defense, Coach, I mean, the loss of Miles Burris kind of stands out, the loss of Jerome Long, a couple of kids who went on to the National Football League. But you've got a couple of pretty good ones here. Leon McFadden is getting some All-American consideration at the cornerback position. And you talked about the fact that you've got a lot of really good players that maybe people haven't heard of yet, and that's why this team is not getting the kind of respect yet that it might deserve. Well, I think we've got some really good players on the defensive side of the ball. And as you said, some of the name guys are not here anymore. Uh, Leon's one of our name guys, and, and we think he'll have a great year. But uh, I think uh, Jake Feely, that some people know about, is our middle linebacker. He's a little undersized, but I think he's a really good player. I think we have five, maybe six defensive linemen that are going to be really good players this year somewhere along the way. Uh, they're young. They haven't played much. Uh, I think they might struggle a little bit in the first couple weeks, but I think eventually we'll be good at the defensive line. And I think our secondary with Nat Berhey, Gabe Lemon, Eric Pinkins, uh, Marcus Andrews, Renee Silowano, those are names that on defense people might not know, but I think our secondary is going to be pretty good. Curious to think what you uh, think of the guy you're coaching against on Saturday, Steve Sarkeesian up there in Washington, former coordinator at USC. What kind of coach have you seen him be looking at tape of his team, and just I don't know how well you know him, but uh, just uh, his reputation. I don't know him very well. I've only met him one time, but uh, he's done a great job there. He's uh, he's done a really good job recruiting. I think they've been in the top 20 recruiting classes ever since he's been there. He puts a lot of time and effort in that. Uh, being the coordinator at SC, you see a lot of similarities, and now he's getting players that can execute like the guys at SC do. Um, I, I think he's maturing as a head coach and i think you see it by play calling and i think you see it by the effort the team puts in or how they play i think it's just the beginning of his career and i think he's going to be one of those big name guys eventually chris does not want to let an old byu quarterback win <laughs> no we can't let, that happen. can't let that happen i'm ho- i'm looking <laughs> for a repeat of the alamo bowl to be honest with you i'd love to see uh, washington lose the, by the same score that they lost the alamo bowl I know you're a defensive guy. You'd hate to see a 67-56 to game. But I imagine you've looked at some of the tape of that, and you are concerned with this Washington offense because they've got some pretty good weapons. Well, I, I mean, we have a difference of opinion now. I, and I have watched the Alamo Bowl very, you know, quite a bit. I just watched it again this morning. Uh, it it kind of worries you a little bit that they might be able to score that many points because they're that talented and that good on offense. But saying all that, I thought that's the worst college football game I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. I mean, so. college football ought to have a little offense and a little defense, and there was no defense in that game. 
Absolutely none, man. What they get? 123 points scored in that one football game. That was amazing. Well, coach, hopefully you bet half as many will be good enough for a victory on Saturday night. We wish you the best in Seattle and, uh, hopefully the uh, 2012 season will get off to a winning start. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks a lot.